Hello, and welcome to another episode of Undiscovered Beasts and Strange Phenomena. Please join our experienced and knowledgeable panel of hosts as we explore the great mysteries of our time. Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, and unexplained phenomena. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our show. Tonight, Mike and I are joined by Jenny Thomas, uh, one of the Gettysburg Ghost Girl, a psychic medium, a ghost hunter extraordinaire. Welcome, Jenny, and thank you very much for joining us on our show tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. We've got lots of questions. We'd like to understand uh, your relationship with, with ghosts and what you do. One of the things that I was interested in is how... Uh, people decide they are psychic mediums. So it's my understanding that you knew you were different, for want of a better word, uh, when you were when you were young. What, what, what does that mean? I, I, it's kind of hard to explain. It's not like I woke up one day and said, "Hey, I'm psychic." It was just it, kind of a knowing that I had, and I had a lot of strange occurrences happen to me that didn't really happen to anybody else but I think the biggest thing would be when I was seven my great-grandmother passed away and she and I were very close and she came to me for two weeks after her funeral which I was not allowed to attend uh and had conversations with me and what did she say I mean what happened the first time she appeared you know I honestly don't remember my mother had told me that this happened when I was 18 and then when I asked her about it again when I was older, she denied it. I was basically put down by my family about being a psychic or a medium because at that time, and we're talking in the, the 70s and the 80s, it just wasn't like the popular thing. So I believe my mother did not want me to be ostracized. I mean, it was strange enough as it was. <laughs> so I, I think adding psychic medium and being able to communicate with ghosts would be just kind of pushing the boundary for, for my family. So she thought, yeah, so you, your family were, were, were initially a little bit hostile. Are they still hostile now? I wouldn't say hostile. I would say denial. Uh, and, and no, uh, my mother sadly passed away when, oh, I should say about almost, it's going close to 15 years now. Uh, and, I she knows it now. She believes me now because yeah, she's, sure she's, she doesn't have any choice now, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have, respectfully. Uh, have you seen her? My my yeah, my my father's good with it. My brother is good with it. My sister, she needs proof, and that's where it's a little difficult because I really don't know how to prove it to her because I know her so well. I I just can't say oh well this is going on and this is going on. It, it's hard to read your own family because you already know them. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Have, have you seen your mother? Has she visited you from the other side since she died? She spends most of her time hovering around my, my father uh, because she doesn't like his girlfriend. But, oh, no. um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, w I do want to say she, she's a very sweet woman. She's very lovely, and we all love her. Um, but she has been to see me. Uh, I, I've seen actually seen her a couple times and then she'll just she comes to me a lot of my dreams and there's just a lot of times I smell her perfume or I hear her voice so she, so when, she when, finds um, her ways so when you say hovering around do you, do you mean I mean forgive me do you mean in a, in a sort of literal sense does she like float over him I, I don't mean it's very respectful I'm really <laughs> no I have this vision. You see, what I don't want to happen to me, Jenny, is I don't want any. I don't want an ex-wife hovering over me or something like that. You know, I'd rather than just carry on. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm <laughs> I, I, I don't. Uh, I, I, my mom is more of a glider. <laughs> yeah. She always That's fancied her, right. fancied her, she, she always fancied herself to be very um, elegant in in some ways. Mm -hmm. So she's not more of a floater. She she likes to hover and just glide you know like she's on ice skates but what I mean is she's usually just around she likes to just be around my dad 
be around her children and her grandchildren. I mean, how do you, how do you know she disapproves of his of his new uh, girlfriend? Does she like try and say that to you? Or how does it work? N- no, um, it's a feeling that I have. Like I can feel how she feels um, when I'm around my father. And uh, again, his very lovely girlfriend <laughs> is around. That's all right. Don't <laughs> worry. We're, we're sh- I'm sure she's nice. Don't, if she's listening, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, her name is. If she's listening, Cindy, I love you. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Cindy. We're fine. Nobody's nobody's yeah, well, over Cindy. you, Cindy. You relax. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they were married for 40 years before she passed away, and. Okay. You know, they they were totally in love with each other from, you know, the first day they started dating. And I yeah. think she still looks at my dad as he's my husband. Yeah, no, I understand. So, mm. so when, when, when we, just going back, because I'm very interested in, in your formative experiences. So you said you mm. had a, a, an experience when you were, you were seven, but you, that was not reiterated to you. When did you first become conscious and what's your earliest memory that you personally have that you can recount of, of having a psychic or supernatural experience? Oh, ever since I was a little girl, uh, I have something called night terrors. Um, a lot of people with sleeping issues have these, but the way I describe mine to my doctors are completely unusual. Uh, I will open my eyes and I will see figures, um, or the light will burn out just as I'm opening up my eyes. I will see things coming towards me. So this has been going on ever since I can remember, since I was a toddler at least. So I, I think that was probably my first clue that I usually ended up running into my parents' room or my sister's room and, and climbing into bed to sleep. Um, and, and you know, when was the first time you actually – actually saw a spirit that you can remember and and and, and, and did you did you speak to it i mean have you spoken to these spirits or did you just feel them i i i can see them and i do speak to them when i was younger uh you know and i would say there was a ghost in my room my parents would say well there's no such thing of ghosts so i learned to become very afraid of these things and so consequently when i would see something when I was younger, I would be terrified, and I, I think I spent the majority of my childhood sleeping in my parents' bed, just Did so you? I could feel oh. safe. Yeah. When, 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 you, when you see them, yeah, I mean, and forgive my ignorance, I'm, I'm, I'm asking because I, I, I've never seen a ghost, so I'm asking from um, a point of curiosity. Do okay. they appear? Do, do they appear like white, uh, spectral, or do they appear? Solid, you know, like 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 a, a person would be with clothing on and things like that. I don't, you know, obviously it's not real clothing, uh, but you don't want to see too many naked ghosts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it just depends on the person. Think? I think if you want to see a naked ghost or not, I I think I know plenty think? of people who would love to see a naked ghost. <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> that's a speciality market. We're not going to corner on this show, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's think about this. Is it white or is it is it white or is it solid? What, what do you say? Um, well, there's there's a couple of different ways that that I I see them. The the most I guess um, frequent way for me would be I see them. It's hard to explain. Almost like snapshots in my head, but they're moving so hmm. fast. It's like a slow moving movie. And then I see them as they want me to see them in whatever form they want. And it, it's, right. it's the same, it's the same thing when you see them in front of you with your very own eyes. Like when I saw my mother, she was in a long white gown, but she had her short hair that she had when she passed away, but she had a very youthful face. And I saw her like that twice. Uh, again, you know, because she has to glide, she was, you know, just gliding around. Um, when, I see things out on investigations. I usually see them in inside my head. Um, and it's sometimes a very rapid thing. When I'm doing readings, it's very easier. It, I should say it's very easier. My, my grammar is bad. I'm sorry. It's easier yes. for me to, to get a lockdown because those are the people who want to be seen. The, the ones I think that don't 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to put a question to you because it, it, it's sure. popped into my mind and I think it's important that um, mm-hmm. you answer this. Because if I'm sceptical about this, uh, I'm not mm-hmm. saying I am, I'm, I'm intrigued, but if, if I'm sceptical, the obvious question is, well, you know, voices in your head could be anything. I know you're not, but, you know, people might say, well, it's, it's, it's imagination or schizophrenia or, or, or you know, um, she wants these things to appear, so she conjures them up in her own mind and she's delusional. There's all those accusations I could put at you. I mean, what would you say about that? How do you know it's a ghost? How do you know it's a spirit? Well, again, I have to go by what people tell me. I, I just don't walk – I'm not someone who walks around saying, oh, here's a dead person, here's a dead person. I, I purposely do not make my life all about the paranormal so hmm. I tend to stay quiet until somebody asks me a question, and then I say, don't tell me anything else. And I tell them what I see, and I describe the voices, and I, you know, maybe nicknames or things like that. And then judging on the feedback from the, the person I'm speaking with, then I know if I've, if I've got it right or not. And this is actually, I mean, it's not science, so there's no perfect way of doing this. And no. there's no such thing as being 100% accurate. So I can just only do my best and tell them what I'm experiencing. And I would say a lot, most of the time, I'm, I'm either accurate or, or very, very close. So does everybody have spirits around them? I mean, would, would, would I have spirits around me? Would Mike have spirits? Do, we, do, do people, are there such things as these guardian angels who look after us? Um. I, I'm, I'm Wiccan, so I don't believe in, in God like that per se. Um, uh-huh. And my, my thing of angels, again, would be spirits. But you have to figure, how many years have human beings existed on the earth? So uh-huh. we are constantly surrounded by, by people who have crossed through the veil. Um, do they all want to be bothered? No. So I don't walk around saying, oh, here's one, here's one, here's one. I'm very fortunate I, I can turn it off. But I could guarantee that you've got, you know, some, some family or, or ancestors or at least friends around you, yes. Interesting. Well, if, if any of them come through um, for, for, for my career, you pick up any messages. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> just, just let us know because I'd be very intrigued uh, what they might have to say. So, so go on, what were you saying? <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I'm not very good with doing phone readings. <laughs> um, well, there we go. Never mind. If, no, were... if, something, if something does come up, I'd be just interested. Uh-huh. Just as a, I'm not suggesting it, it, it will or even it might, but if it does, that would be mm-hmm. interesting. So, so, so when, 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 we, when we talk about ghosts, is there a particular way um, that, I mean, when, you, when people come, is it, do people come to see you? Um, do you get feelings? Have you ever, I mean, how does, it, how does it strike you as an emotion or a gift? How does it work? It's kind of hard to explain. I, I feel different things at different times. A lot of times the scalp, my scalp starts to get kind of a tingly, stretchy feeling, so I know there's something around, and then if I want to, That's I can. the first thing. So you walk in a room, I'm... and the first thing that happens is, is your scalp tingles. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like there's fingers on it, kind of like walking around and, and pulling. Um, mm. And that's when, if I feel like it, I'll, I'll you know, open up and, and see what's there. But I usually just try and stay closed off. If someone comes to me and asks me about it, then, then I'll open up. So, so will people, do you ever get messages? Have you ever had um, examples of messages to, um, from people? Or, that, you know, you've been in a room and you thought, oh, I must tell somebody this. I, I guess I'm trying to figure out what you mean, like messages for people who are with me at the moment or yeah. messages? Yeah, so oh. you're, in a, you're in a room and suddenly you get a message and it's for somebody in that room and you feel like you have to tell them. Have you, got, have you had any, any examples of where you thought, oh, I need to pass this message on? Or do you have to sit there and actually focus in, in them? I'm wondering, I'm wondering about the nature of, of the abilities you possess. Well, it's, if you heard, you've heard of gut feeling, correct? Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like a compulsion. If I feel the compulsion to say something to somebody, I will. If, whether or not 
you know, if someone's speaking to me from the other side, I have to have that compulsion to say something. Because if I don't feel that way, I'm going to talk to the wrong person or get the message wrong, and I'm going to look like an idiot. So I, I kind of wait, wait until I get that overwhelming desire to speak to somebody about it. Otherwise, I, I just stay quiet. Right, so you have to have an overwhelming... And how does that ma- overwhelming desire manifest itself? Do you feel physically like you need to do it? Or do you just think, oh, you know, something inside you is telling you that you should tell them? I get anxious. Uh, so oh. the more anxious I get and the more drawn I get towards a person, I, I know I have to say something. I mean, I'm already a very hyperactive person. <laughs> so uh-huh. I try not to let anxiety get the best of me or I would be bouncing off the walls 24-7. So I, I just go by what my body's telling me. Now that's cool. Now, you mentioned that you're a Wiccan, and I was interested in that because I mm-hmm. don't know an awful lot about that. So, so I'm going to try and learn a little bit now. So, so Do you, do you uh, need me to put a curse on someone for you? No, 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 because Wiccans don't do that, though, do they? <laughs> I'm told that Wiccans don't do white magic. Is that right? No. <laughs> but not. That's okay. um, there's really... In my mind, there's no such thing as black or white magic. It's um, okay. the person. You know, either the person has light or the person is just a, a vast black hole sucking in all the good energy around. So you could use the same spell to do something nice for somebody or you could use it to do something terrible. So it's, it's all in the intention and what you want to do. So, so let me let me understand a little bit. I mean, when when I mm-hmm. when I think of a Wiccan, so you, mm-hmm. obviously my my um, my background and history is based in Judeo Christianic theology in the same way as mm-hmm. it's like. Now, what do Wiccans believe happens to you when you die? Um, it's. I mean, I think everybody is kind of different. My thought is you know your body goes back and becomes one with nature because wicca is about nature and and the moon and the sun and the elements so your your body just kind of becomes one with nature and and then your soul is free to do what it wants to do so some of us come back and some of us just stay free and and travel the stratosphere is is there an element of of punishment or reward, if you know what I mean, in, in, in Wiccan uh, beliefs. So you're, what, you're, what do, I mean, do bad people go to hell, good people go to a kind of heaven? How, how, does, it, how does it work? Well, I, mean, I'm not... I, I, I don't believe in hell. I believe your hell is what you make it here on earth. Uh, okay. it's, it's how you want to live your life. So your rewards and punishment come while you're living. Uh, if you are an awful nasty person in life and you can't find a way to fix it, you're probably going to be awful and nasty in death. Um, if you're a good person in life, then, you know, the good things will come to you. It's, it's kind of like karma and the uh-huh. good things will come to you and, and, you know, you cast out that good energy and the good energy comes back to you. So when you do finally go, then you're still that good energy floating around. Nancy, so do you, believe, do you believe in reincarnation as well? Uh, I, mean, I, you, do. You I, so, I do. So how, I do. How, how would that work, Jenny? How does it work? You know, um, I don't know a whole lot about reincarnation. I only know what I feel. And I've had so many people tell me the most amazing stories that I've I've come to believe it. So it's, again... If you deserve to come back, you, you get the opportunity to come back if you choose to. And some people, I mean, I've, I've known people who've been around so many times that they started off in ancient Egypt. Uh, some people are brand new to this earth. Some people have only been around once or twice. So it's, it's whether or not you deserve it and whether or not you choose to, that that's what I believe. So when when someone passes away, because I'm mean, I'm intrigued by this as you might as you might have guessed, uh, mm-hmm. when 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 someone passes away, at that moment they 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 they're dead. So what do they do? Do they make a choice about whether they want to float up and and go somewhere else or being reincarnated? I mean, what what's the process and and who might guide them 
to make that decision in your view? Well, again, I, I, I don't know a whole lot about reincarnation, um, but from people I've spoken to about it, they can vividly remember after they have left their body, there's a door and they have the choice to go through that door or not. I mean, they vividly remember there's a door. Uh, I have no recollection of a door, although I have recollections of things from previous lives that I, I should not in this life, you know, if there was no reincarnation, how do I know this stuff? Um, mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what great power makes that decision, but there, there's something out there that's deciding, well, you get the chance or you don't get the chance. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I thought about with reincarnation, and, and, I, and I was interested in exploring it, I'm not dismissive of it, uh, I mm-hmm. understand it's a part of, of many religions like Buddhism and Hinduism and, and, and other things. So, mm-hmm. so one of the things I wondered, and I don't expect you to have an answer to this, I'm just interested if you do, though, with, <laughs> from a Western perspective. So it, it's really this. Why, if we are reincarnated, are we not given the ability to remember our past lives? I know there are examples of children who've come out with these things. But generally speaking, why don't we remember them? What do you think about that? Well, you're in a new life. So if you are remembering a bunch of your old life, maybe that would affect it. I, you know, your new life, I'm, I'm not really sure. But again, a lot of these people I know, they do remember past lives. Um, one man who's a friend of mine, he's always a soldier. In every single life, he's a soldier dating back to ancient Roman times. And he remembers, he has memories of every single life as being a soldier. And he was a soldier in this life. Um, so I, I believe that when you have a, a past life, when you pass away and you enter a new one, you bring things from your past life. Perhaps uh, if you were shot in the back, In a past life, now you have a fear of having your back to open spaces, so you're always sitting against a wall. Uh, I think I may have been hung in a past life, and I actually have a fear of things being around my neck. I I never wear anything tight around my neck, not even a scarf. So there's things I think you bring. I mean, because it's an irrational fear. Well, where does it come from? Mm. I mean, it's not not like a fear of spiders. It's a fear of having not having your back to a wall, or it's a terrible fear of sharks but you're never near a shark so why are you afraid of sharks so there's various things that you can pull through um i believe in my last life i was a a southern belle during the civil war and Mm -hmm. i've had numerous people tell me i have very southern sensibilities about me and i act very southern even though i was born and raised in pennsylvania Mm. interesting so have you, have you ever done any of uh, this uh, past life regression? It's very hard to hypnotize me. I've, I've tried, and I just don't go under. Mm. So I, I'd like to if I can, you know, I, I think I have a fear of letting go. So if I could let go enough for someone to put me fully under, I would love to try that. So let, let's talk a little, if, if, if we may, about, about the Wiccan before I want to move back to the ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just interested in the Wiccan a little bit. So, so if um, do Wiccans practice in covens? I mean, how do how do you worship? There are Wiccan covens. Um, I am a sole practitioner, so I'm I'm pretty much on my own. Right. But I I kind of like it that way because then I'm free to do what I want when I want. Um, so it's just like there's there's a lot of types of covens out there. There's vampire covens. There's wicked covens. There's druids. There's there's did I say vampires? There's vampires. Yeah. And there's, the vampire, there's Satanists. What does a vampire coven do? What do they do? Sounds a bit. I do not know because I've never been to one. Now Bridget knows <laughs> because she actually knows people who are part of a coven. But I have never been to one, but I would love to go to one just to be a fly on the wall and see what happens. Just, just so we understand, Bridget's your partner in the Gettysburg Ghost Guild. Yeah, when you say Bridget, yes, you're... Bridget, Bridget, Tracy, and Robert and I are the, the Gettysburg Ghost Gals. Uh, Bridget founded the group, um, oh my gosh, I guess it's uh, maybe about eight years ago she founded okay. the group. And I came into it almost five years ago. Very good. And um, 
so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, let, let's talk about ghosts. When you think about the ghosts and the ghosts that you have encountered, mm-hmm. what what incidents really stand out as memorable and why? Well, probably the most standout one will be the attachment I got when I was 17. I used a Ouija board with a friend of mine not knowing what I was doing. And we thought we were talking to this kid. And I didn't know how to close out the board. I didn't know anything. And I just noticed weird things happening after that. You know, my things would go missing until I would get really upset. Then they'd reappear. And I would say, oh, I've got a little poltergeist. I've got a little poltergeist. And it followed me everywhere I went no matter, you know, where I was living. But when I started doing ghost tours for the Farnsworth house, things really got out of control and I started getting physically hurt. So I'd wake up with black eyes and scratches, bruises, and a lot of other things I'm not going to go into. Um, And that's actually when I ended up calling Bridget because I was really on the verge of completely losing my mind. And I just couldn't take it anymore. So that is probably the the, the, the biggest thing that stood out to me. Uh, I've since learned to protect myself, and, and I know how to, to use these things and, and take care of them. But, you know, I had this thing for most of my life, and it got to the point well, where it's just so bad. And, mm-hmm. Don't give it there, Jenny. What happened next? So the, the things were attached to themselves. What happened next? Tell us. You want well, to know. Well, <laughs> Bridget came out. And uh-huh. she had, you know, with, with that version of the ghost gals, and they did a couple, they did two, two investigations and got some really good evidence and great EVPs of this thing communicating with Bridget, actually mentioning her name. And they were able to cleanse me because it wasn't my house. It was, it was me. And uh, unfortunately, I get a call from Bridget about two weeks later asking if I'd had any more issues. I'm like, no, I'm great. Everything's fine. And this thing had gotten so angry with her that it, it followed her home and was throwing things no. around her house and gave her, she woke up with a big bloody scratch from underneath her rear end all the way down to her ankle while she was wearing heavy sweatpants and covered up in her sheets at night. So, so, so what was it? What was the thing? Um, we're not exactly sure we've had people tell us it was a low level demon but i my opinion is that it was just a really really angry possessed possessive spirit i i that's my opinion but other people think it was a low level demon What's the difference between a, a low level de- demon and a high level demon forgive my ignorance how would we determine um, what well, I, I'm not a demonologist, so I, I couldn't give you names or specifics, but some people have called it um, an incubus, which would be more of a, a lower level demon. But to me, since I don't believe in hell, I don't believe like in little Satan's minions or anything like that. I, I think things, you open up holes or windows and things from other dimensions come through. And I, I think it was just either a really nasty spirit or something from maybe another dimension that came through. But, um, yeah, people have said it's an incubus, which isn't, like, I think the worst demon in the world. I don't think they can possess a person. But, you know, it's nasty all the same. <laughs> I wouldn't want any really demon fun. around me. <laughs> no, no, it's not something you'd, you'd, you'd want hanging about. I, I'm sure about yeah. it. So that was your first encounter, uh, and obviously, mm-hmm. and after that, you formed a, a friendship with, I guess, with 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 Bridget. And did, do you use your gifts when you're out um, looking? I I do. I'm Bridget. Always finds out about where we're going, and um, we decided after a little while that I would go in without any knowledge of a house or wherever we are, and do a walk through. And I I take a recorder with me because I tend to go into a different zone and I don't remember half of what I see or say. So I take a, you know, my phone with me and record and I'll walk around and just explaining all of my, what I see and hear and feel, and then 
play it back for Bridget and she'll tell me, oh, my God, that's right, or no, nah, that's not right, or I don't know about that. So that's how I use it. But we don't, because it's not, I mean, paranormal isn't really scientific anyway, but there's no equipment involved with that. But I do love my equipment. So when you say you love your equipment, what sort of equipment do you use? Uh, well, again, I use a recorder. Um, I have, uh, we use night vision cameras and we have some state of the art applications that were given to us by our sponsor ghost hunters app um and so they're on our computers and they are military grade like radar and sonar and they use bluetooth so we like to use those a lot and one of them is actually hooked up to our our night vision camera Mm. so when it's filming, if something walks into view and we can't see it, there's a little alarm that will go off on the computer through the app that's, you know, connected to the computer or to the, to the camera. And we have gotten some amazing evidence of bizarre things, including a man in a cowboy hat, you know, that we just. Tell tell us about the man in the cowboy hat. I want to hear about some of this evidence. Well, we used to have a friend. In, in Gettysburg, who owned a shop that the, the house was there before the Civil War, and he also sold, you know, um, artifacts from the Civil War as well as um, uh, the Vietnam War and World War One, World War Two, and we set up in the shop and had the camera angled just right that we could see reflections in in the the glass. Uh, oh, I can't even think of the display cases. And we all left and turned the lights out so night vision could do its thing. And we went back later to check on it and Bridget's reviewing the film and the reflection of the glass from the display cases were bouncing off each other. And we could see that there was definitely a figure that looked like a man in a cowboy hat or maybe a general's hat from the Civil War, like walking on the the side next to one of the display cases, but it was reflected off another display case. But yet there was nobody in there. The store was long closed. It was dark outside. It was dark inside inside as well. So uh, have you ever spoken to any of these Gettysburg ghosts? Have you ever spoken to anyone? Well, when I did tours uh, for the Farnsworth, a lot of them would end up... uh, in a little area called the Grove, which was at the base of East Cemetery Hill, where a major two-day battle was was uh, in a day was took place there. So uh, at the end of the tours, I would turn around and sometimes sing to the spirits just to give them comfort. And I, I found that they really liked the Beatles and the Dave Clark Five. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. That's Is that where. You know? like is that because you yeah. like them? Is that what you're singing to them? Because you know That's what? what if I would... playlist is quite limited. They might like Duran Duran. They've just never heard you singing on it. Exactly. Everyone goes out there and they, they sing songs from the Civil War. I'm like, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing some 60s rock and roll and see what they think. So you sing it. What did you sing to them? Um, well, let's see. I'm trying to remember the songs. I would sing um, All My Lovin' and um, Because would be the two that I usually sang. And when I would bring people out for ghost hunts, if I sang that song, people would start getting hits on some of their equipment and they'd get some really odd photos at the time. So I, I think that's what they liked. But I liked it. You, could, you could try Twist and Shell. That might get the energy going in the room or something. You know what I mean? It's good that people... Yeah, I never, I never thought about that. I just, you know, sang what I felt like singing. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, so uh, when you, have you so uh, just going back to your abilities and, and your um, ability to communicate. Mhm. Mr. Gettysburg, Civil War ghosts. Have you, have, have you spoken to these ghosts in your, in, you know, in the way that you do? Yeah, I mean, I just. I just talk to them the way I talk to anybody else because they are people. Uh, uh-huh. And again, when, when I was a tour guide, the, the, the Farnsworth um, at one time was exceptionally haunted because it was a field hospital. 
during the Battle of Gettysburg. So there were numerous uh, residential ghosts there or, or spirits. And I would walk down in the basement to light all the candles to get ready for the tour. And I just talk and have conversations with them. And once in a while, my dress would be pulled or my hat would be, you know, pushed a little bit just so they would say, oh, yeah, we know you're here. Um, just little things so like that. What do they say to you, Jenny? I mean, when, when, when you talk to them, what do, what do they talk about to you? <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's the, the ones there were so used to the tours, it would just be, you know, good evening, how are you doing? And um, Or sometimes they'd be in a grumpy mood and tell me to leave. All right, just, I know. Just, just regular, just like the way you and I are talking, we would just have, uh-huh. they would just, you know, good to see you, things like that, and just little things, nothing big, or if they could tell if I was in a bad mood, and I think I was probably more scary than they were. <laughs> oh, wow. um, if you're in a really bad I'm, mood, are they going to scared of you, Jenny? Gosh, you must be, you must be fierce <laughs> when you're in a bad mood. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that. I, I've, I've had my moments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wanting to deal with anything, but we <laughs> no, 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 all go I, through that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm only, I'm only joking. With you. I'm just trying to understand um, the mentality of the ghost. Do they ever, do they ever try and uh, say anything to you? Do they ever warn you about things? Do they ever give you any historical knowledge, or is it, is it mainly just small talk? That they well, they, they've told me things about them personally, uh, but. You know, there's no way of really saying, oh, well, I can go look this up. I mean, there's no, things we already knew because it was already listed in papers or, you know, it was in the historical society. But per- personal things, I'd have to actually find out that spirit's whole name and then actually go. Because a lot of them were, there, there were men from Georgia, Louisiana, and North Carolina in that house. So... I'd actually have to go to these places to to find out if what they told me was was actually correct. Sure, I mean, I'm, and I'm not asking, I'm not going to try and do a historical corroboration exercise. I'm mm-hmm. just interested in what I have said to you. I mean, can you give me an example of one of what one of these guys from Georgia might have said to you? I mean, how do, how do they? I'm just intrigued in in how they communicate with you. Not, not, I'm not asking you to, start to quantify it historically, just, just, just an impression. Well, I mean, we do know that there was a young Confederate soldier who was out on the upstairs porch when he was shot through the neck, and his head was nearly decapitated, and oh. he ended up dying and bleeding out on that porch. Uh, so we, we know that his wife had sent him like a Dear John letter shortly before he died. And she was a nasty person. So there would be women with blonde hair and blue eyes that would come in. And he would be saying, I don't like that bitch. I don't like her. I don't, you know, just saying Mm. nasty things because he's not, he wasn't the nicest person in life. (laughs) Um, So, and then these women would actually have things happen to them where they would be pinched. Uh, One girl was actually attacked where she could feel a hand going up into her hair and she had her head violently jerked back. And while all this was going on, her boyfriend was taking pictures. So I have a series of pictures of, of a hole opening up in this girl's hair. And at the last picture, it looks like there's a knot of hair at the op- top of the opening of the hole. Wow. So if, um, if when we think about, when we think about these ghosts, mm-hmm. like, do, do, do you try and tell them, do you try and say to them, don't do that? I mean, how do you, how do you stop them um, behaving in that way? Well, you know, it could be like me going up to you and saying, stop punching Mike in the face. If you want to punch him in the face, you're going to punch him in the face. So, well, I'm going saying to. And... No, let's say you put... <laughs> I like Mike. I'm not going to punch him in the face. He's a nice guy. <laughs> it's just a hypothetical. <laughs> Um, but it's just like, if I would say, don't do that, are they going to listen to me? I I don't know. But people would also go there because, and they they go to Gettysburg, not just for the history, because they want some sort of experience. So for me to try and, and stop their experience would be kind of squashing their fun. I would always go in and say, please do something. 
because I'm bored and I want someone to scream. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had any ghosts? Of, I mean, we've talked a little bit about ghosts of the cats. Let's 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 turn it around a little bit, Tiffany. Have you ever had any ghosts that have ever helped you or warned you or tried to help other people in some way? Um, I haven't experienced that. My my dad did, where um he. He's retired, but he does some, some a lot of traveling, um, like delivery type stuff, for for a small company. Uh, he was doing pharmaceuticals for a little while, and he was driving and zoning off, and he heard someone say George really loud because that's his name, and he snapped out of it and just narrowly missed having an accident. Yeah. So, yeah, and he couldn't figure out because the voice was male, but it wasn't familiar to him. So, uh, yeah, he's he's had experiences like that, and other people I know have had experiences, but, but I haven't really had anything like that. I understand. So you do, you do private readings for people, is that correct? Um, if someone asks me to, to read them, because I, I can read auras very well, um, I will, but I never charge. Okay, that's, that's very nice. I mean, so, so if someone sits down, so it's, a, it's a favor you do for people if they want to. You don't make money off it. That, 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 is that what you're saying? Right. I, I, and I don't, I don't condemn anyone who does because, you know, no. everybody needs to make a living. I yeah, just yeah. personally feel it's not for me to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been doing it, charging for so long that I would just feel really off about it if I started charging all of a sudden. I understand. So I'm just trying to, to, to in a nice way, get inside your head. So you mm-hmm. sit down, you sit down with, and there's a person physically sat opposite you. When, how do you know that a message is coming through from those, from somebody connected with them? Do you see things in your head? Do you hear things? How does, how does the process work? Um, well, usually when people want me to read them, it's to start reading their aura, which is something that tells me about that person. And then if the, the, the medium part is going to kick in, you know, um, I will mention, you know, I see someone behind you, but I can't tell if it's this person or if it's related to you. And I'll go on and describe the person. But it always, doesn't always happen that way. I don't always see somebody around somebody I'm reading. So when you see when you see auras, can you tell people um, what you're doing there and what the different colours may represent? I, I, I think I know, but uh, it would be useful if somebody who does it articulates it for people. Um, again, when I see auras, it's not like I'm looking at somebody and oh, there's a magical rainbow over their head. It's it's something that it almost feels like it's in the front of my brain, and I can see there's colors around people and for everybody it's different every some people have auras that are swirly some have dots i saw a girl whose aura was all fireworks um, oh wow I've, what did that mean she's got fireworks just in oh like it means she's something special she's going to she was only 13 uh, or 12 and it just means that she's she's very powerful very strong uh, with her abilities, she just hasn't come into it yet, uh, mm. and she's going to do great things as a human being. And it's very rare to see somebody with with fireworks as their aura. That's nice. So, okay, yeah. so, inter- so, so tell us more about the, about the, about the colors then. Uh, well, like I said, that they're all different. I've seen two people with their auras connected together. Uh, I've seen auras that just look like giant blocks. I've seen them that look, they're the shape of a rainbow. So it it just depends. And then we all have our primary colors, like the colors that are with us all the time because that's our personality. And then there's other colors that are usually smaller that just represent maybe something a person is going through. Um, You know, like, like I could see someone and say, oh, well, your primary color is red and that's love and passion and power. And then I can see, but I also see a lot of loneliness in you. I feel like you're going through something right now that you have trouble explaining. Um, you 
are looking for somebody in your life to spend your life with, just little things like that. Right, and how do you, how does this process translate out? Do you get feelings or um, does, nope. does somebody tell the, you something? How, the, how does it work? The, the psychic thing is just what pops in my head. I've seen musical notes around people who ended up being musicians. Um, I saw one person, all I saw was a skull um, talking a on skull. a soapbox. <laughs> A skull. Oh, That's all I saw was a skull. Hmm? What, what did the skull on a, on a box mean? Oh, dear. Um, the soapbox meant that it's somebody who likes to orate quite a bit. Um, uh-huh. The skull wasn't death. It was more of deception. Right. You know, like this person's putting on a front, but underneath, here's just a skull. So it was more like the person was very deceiving an appearance and the way they were presenting themselves. Right, I see. So, so, so you get these enough. I mean, and and do you ever have like when you're doing these videos? Do you ever have uh, spirits come through at all in any way? Oh yes. Uh, there, when I'm when I'm doing these readings, I again I will, if I feel compelled to, I will say, okay, this is see a person standing behind you or a person over there or a person over there. Um, I'm still developing my, my uh, ability. Mm. I am, I mean, I haven't had a lifetime to work on it. Like a lot of people, I only mm. started doing this uh, maybe about six years ago, seven years ago. So right. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to get to where I need to be. So it's very difficult for me to pinpoint who goes where. So, I could be in a full house and see someone who could belong to anybody. I don't know, but I'm not about to go around saying, is this person with you? Is this person with you? <laughs> no. So why did, you, um, why did you start doing it six, seven years ago? What was the pivotal moment that made you want to do it then? Because I was so overwhelmed when I started doing the ghost tours because there were so many spirits trying to get me to get my attention. Um, I, I just, it was making me, it was making me crazy. And I was very fortunate that I worked with a lot of people who were very kind and waited for me to go through my crazies, but were also very <laughs> open to the spirit world and helped me to, to calm down <laughs> and to give me a little bit of guidance on what I should be doing. I see. So when you, when you're, um, when you're teaming, teaming up with, um, your friends from the Ghost uh, Ghost Girls. Uh, how, mm-hmm. how do you approach an investigation? So, I mean, you go into houses. How, how does it work? Just just so people can understand what what your methodology is. Well, Tracy um, and Robert are like the historians, uh, especially Robert. If there's any antiques involved, Robert's the guy because he knows all about that stuff. Uh, Bridget is more of like the scientific leader of the group. Tracy runs equipment and does some, uh, does, you know, investigation into, you know, the house or the store, wherever we are, and anything that might have happened there. And uh, I'm the one, again, who goes in by myself. And then when I'm done, grab my equipment and and Bridget and I go in and we we start investigating. Uh, However, currently, Bridget and I are working on a side project where it's just the two of us. I can't go too deep into detail. But we are planning this summer to do a lot of traveling. We'll be filming, and we will also be inviting people in that area to come and actually be a small, like be in a small art audience and participate with us on film. So traveling around the country and filming, I mean, tell us as much as you can. Because it's interesting, you know, traveling mm-hmm. and filming. What, is there anything else you can tell us, or is it all secret? I won't push you. I'm just interested. Well, well, we don't want to let too much out, but uh, no. this, this, we think, is a revolutionary idea. It's never been done in the paranormal field, as far as we know, and we've, been, we've done research on it. We actually, the two of us, just put our heads together and come out with, like, sometimes the most outlandish shit. Excuse my language. <laughs> um, <laughs> but sometimes it's, we have something golden, and we think we stumbled on something 
golden. And, and I, I, again, I, I don't think anything like this has been done in the paranormal field before. So we're really looking forward to getting out there and, and filming. Okay. Uh, and, and, and when you're doing your investigations at the moment, are you, mm-hmm. is, there any, is there any particular areas you work? Um, are there any particular ghosts you're contacting at the moment? Uh, well, I, I no longer do the tour, so I'm not doing that. And as a rule, I, I don't try to just um, contact spirits. I, I don't do, I, I don't do uh, seances. I'm not a physical medium. I'm an evidential medium. Physical mediums can actually let spirits inhabit their body, and they can talk through and things like that. Evidential mediums are more like me, where they're descriptive and feelings and, and what they're see- and, and how a person looks. Um, but even if I could, I, I probably would not do a seance. I, I don't why, think. Why, why wouldn't you? I, if you're just trying to contact someone's family member or best friend or something like that, it's fine if you have someone who knows what they're doing, but I really am opposed to just opening up some gaping hole and letting anything come through. So yeah. if other if other people want to try that, more power to them. But it's not anything I have any desire to do. I understand. Mike, Mike just mentioned a question to me, which I, I I think is a very good one. So I'm going to put it to you. Okay. Um, the question he had, he had was 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 is there any correlation between uh, human suffering and trauma, like warfare, and as a consequence, an increased likelihood of of uh, paranormal activity? Uh, you know, obviously oh. you've got a lot of ghosts at Gettysburg. Uh, what, what do you think about uh-huh. this question? Oh, definitely. In my opinion, yes. Uh, there were so many people out there that that lost their lives in a blink of an eye that their their either their spirit or their imprint has been left behind. Um, it's just like a child who dies and doesn't realize it's dead. A lot of those spirits don't know they're dead or a lot of them are just still attracted to that place because that's where they drew their last breath. So I definitely believe there's a correlation between trauma and, and activity. So if, if they don't know they're dead, I mean, I mean, how do you, how do you, first of all, how do you know that they don't know if that makes sense? You know, how, how, how do you arrive at that conclusion? Oh, well, Okay. It's kind of based off of of things that we've picked up from our instruments and things that I've picked up on my own. Basically, you know, you're you're running down a field and then you're shot through the chest, but your life is over in a second. You you know, um, some spirits I believe still think that they are alive and they're still rerunning that same traumatic experience of running up the hill over and over and over again. It just happens so quickly. You have no time to think about it. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah it does. It does. <laughs> so what, what emotions do they convey to you, these people? Uh, I often get a lot of confusion. You, you know, where am I? You know, why do you look like that? When I was dressed, when I did tours, we were dressed in period dress, so I looked like I belong. But there was confusion as to everybody else who's in shorts and, and jeans and leather jackets because that's not what they're used to. So something like that would would tell me that they don't know that they've passed away and can't figure out why these people are half naked outside. <laughs> oh, um, right. Did they actually say that? You know, what, are these, what are all these naked people doing running around? Kind of, yeah, like a lot of confusion, like why is that woman showing me her ankles? Because back in the 1800s, a woman did not show her ankles. No, it was unseemly to show your ankles, and look at today. (laughs) (laughs) I know. So so, so, it would just be be little things like that. So how do you speak to them? I mean, what do you you say about that? I mean, how do you you, Um, you speak? Well, if I'm doing a tour, I ignore them because I'm, I'm just doing a tour, uh, I sometimes explain to them that, that they have gone on and try to pass them, uh, or sometimes I don't say anything. Again, it's just compulsion. And again, I don't want to be surrounded by a lot of people and then have me just start speaking to nobody. 
because then people look at me like I'm a wackadoodle. <laughs> so, so when you speak to them, do you actually have to have to physically speak back to them, or do, do you? I mean, forgive me because we've never actually met, so I don't want to. Uh, this is turn an obtuse question, but do you speak to them in your head? <laughs> I mean, did you speak out loud? I mean, how do you communicate back it, to them? Again, it depends on what I'm feeling. I think if I'm completely open, then I don't have to be. I don't have to be. Um, verbal about it but again if if the spirit doesn't realize that he or she has passed on or again I'm feeling cranky and I don't feel like dealing with it then I I will speak out loud and and what what do people ever give you funny looks do you explain what you're doing I mean how does what what do people say around you no I just let them think I'm crazy (laughs) do you do you just let them go around do you never put a contact about it you never say, oh, actually, I'm speaking to a ghost or, or not? No. no, because, you know, some people will be like, oh, that's really cool. What's going on? But a lot of people will be like, oh, you're so full of crap. And I just, if people don't want to believe, that's fine by me. I'm not going to try to change your mind. But I just don't feel like dealing with people's lip about it, you know, or their, their attitude. So I'm just like, just think I'm crazy. I don't care. Yeah, okay, I, I, I understand. <laughs> Now, one of the questions I had I had for you that I was I was I was really interested in was you said mm-hmm. you know early on that you were um, developing your your gift for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, to what end? What do you want to do with your gift? Have you any ambition um, in in this world? I don't mean I don't mean about fame and glory. I, I can tell that's not right. your motivation. I I I, mean I only of, know of, I only know that. I am here to help people, both living and dead. I, I don't know what my destiny is yet. Um, that will be revealed to me eventually. I, I just have to make myself meditate some more and be more grounded than I am. But I, I just know that I'm here to, to, to help, you know, on a one-on-one basis. So I want to get... I guess, strong enough that I can see more clearly and that I can communicate that better with the living people I'm talking, I'm speaking with. I see. So, so, so it's going to be revealed to you. Uh, you mm-hmm. Eventually. <laughs> Hopefully. Eventually. Okay. So um, we haven't got a lot of time. So, so um, mm-hmm. what, what's coming up next for you? You mentioned this, uh, you mentioned this tour uh, you're going to do. Uh, what are the things that you, you're planning on doing in, in the near future? Well, right now, Bridget and I are just focused on doing, you know, getting ourselves situated for the summer and getting out there. And uh, we're going to probably start off in the uh, New England area and work our way down and try and eventually work our way out, you know, Midwest to the West Coast. We just have to see how everything goes. Um, But other than that, you know, uh, I still have my regular job that I'm doing, so I'm just focusing on that and and living my my everyday normal life. Very cool. So so how long do you think you'll be away? And and, and when you say summer, can you give us a date yet, or is that too early? Uh, it's a little early, but I know as soon as we have our first, you know, date and place where we're going, everything all set up, we're going to make an announcement. So that way people who um, are in the area can get in touch with us and say, yeah, I'd love to be a part of that. Because, uh, again, we're going to involve a small audience for a part of it. Very right, cool. Well, we'll look forward, we'll look forward to uh hearing from from you about that i mean please let us know when you can and in the meantime mm-hmm. jenny uh, ike and i would just like to thank you uh, for being an excellent guest uh, both of us oh. have, i've very much enjoyed having you on the show thank you ever so much jenny oh well thank you for having me it was great fun thank you jenny thank you very much and that ladies and gentlemen was jenny thomas uh, a lead investigator of the gettysburg ghost girls i i very much enjoyed talking to you uh, jenny and so did mike We'll be back very soon. Thank you very much. Good night.